Hello and welcome to our worship this morning. The following talk is based on Luke chapter 13 verses 1 to 9. And as ever in this season of Lent, the Bible readings that we are presented with are not necessarily the easiest to understand or the most comfortable to read. And today's gospel is no exception. As is so often the case, we pick up are reading midway through a conversation Jesus is having with others. Jesus has been warning the people to be ready for the end times. That there will be division among them. He's reminded them that they are a people who can read the skies, therefore know what the weather is likely to be. They're able to judge what is lawful and right. So it is in this particular context that today's reading begins. It's a passage which introduces us to Jesus, listening to and recalling with others some recent events, local newsworthy tragedies, one being a mass murder by Pilate of Galileans, and the second what appears to be a tragic accident, when a tower, possibly stone or brick, or maybe even scaffold, fell and killed 18 people. We immediately know from this that Jesus is a man in touch with local news events. He may not have had the social media in Jesus' day that we enjoy, but that doesn't mean he didn't have news channels. But in speaking of these tragedies, Jesus dispels for those who are gathered the tittle cattle that was potentially going around the 18 who were crushed under this tower were no guiltier of sin than others who were in the vicinity who survived on that day. The death was not a direct punishment for anything they had or hadn't done. Rather, it really does seem like an awful case of wrong place, wrong time. Jesus then sidesteps from this discussion of events tell his hearers a parable, moving their thoughts from the focus of recent tragedies and any suggestion that the deaths of those people could have been linked to a life that they lived. To speak of the kingdom of heaven by the account of a fig tree. Last Friday evening I was delighted to discover that Gardner's World was back on BBC Two at its usual time slot of eight o'clock. You may well know that our vicarage garden is far too big. I don't have the time to go out and look after it. I don't have the energy either to care for it and tend it in the way that it needs. So the grass gets cut by someone else and it's kept tidy, but we can't say much more than that, sadly. I do aspire to be a really good gardener. In my mind, I live in a house with a fantastic garden, a garden which is just the right size, meaning I'm able to spend just the right amount of time up there in it, enjoying it, nurturing it, tending and caring for the plants and the shrubs, giving them the love and the nutrients that they need to watch them thrive and to enjoy relaxing being in it. Well, perhaps that's for some future point. Because at the moment, the reality is I have to enjoy the gardening and the gardens of others. Visiting gardens of friends, both here and when we are on holiday too. But the gardener in the parable that Jesus told certainly knew what he was doing. He knew how to tend and care for plants. When the owner of the vineyard instructed him to cut down the barren fig tree, the garden's defence of it was sure. It was best to be left for one more year. With additional care, he would give it in the hope and expectation that it would indeed next year bear fruit. If not, 12 months time would be the time to cut this barren plant down. In John's Gospel, Jesus said to his disciples on the eve of his crucifixion, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. 
while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will, it will be even more fruitful. I am the vine, and you are the branches. And so this gardening analogy is one that Jesus returns to often. And what he is saying is that rooted in him, we will be strong. But through our rootedness in the good soil in which we are planted, from which we are fed, we will be equipped and enabled to do so much more than we are able to do on our own. St. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But what is the application for us today? The reading that recalls a topical conversation of recent events, the known cruelty of Pilate and his murderous acts, the tragic accident that resulted in 18 people being killed. Jesus' assurance that degrees of sinfulness were not part of these events. So shocking were they Jesus and those gathered were talking about them, but also Luke records them in his writing. What's the application of Jesus's sideways step into the parable of the fig tree for us today in 2022? I believe that we too are being asked about our rootedness in Christ. Life has taken an unexpected turn for all of us. We've dealt with changes, we have adapted. We've lived through difficulties and frustrations. Perhaps in these recent months and years, we've not been as fruitful for God as we were previously. This morning, both in church and on Zoom, you are receiving this sermon recorded as I'm sharing in Holy Communion with our friends in Halewood discovering what it means for them to be rooted and nurtured and fruitful for God at a time of interregnum. But turning our thoughts to ourselves here at All Hallows, thinking for a moment of those All Hallows activities that stopped during lockdown and thinking of those that have restarted since. Pathfinders has stopped Messy church has stopped. House groups have stopped. Food and fellowship have stopped. But now we are back together, almost all together and have been for many months. We've been dug around. We've been refertilized as we've joined together regularly in our Sunday worship, both in church and online. It really is time for us to once again begin to be fruitful for God. I have a great desire to see our youth provision up and running again, if not alone, in partnership with a neighbouring church. I'm really eager for Messy Church to be begin again, up and running once more. I'd love to have something to replace food and fellowship with. How about a lunch once a month before our film afternoon? I do want to see home groups not only begin again, but grow and thrive. Some people attending these things for the first time. I'd love to see a prayer group continue beyond our Lenten time for prayer, because it is by being God's people, enjoying fellowship with one another, studying his word and praying together, that we will bear more fruit for him. And I really hope and pray that the people of All Hallows, you and I together, are as keen to see these activities and many others happen as I am, because I can't do them on my own. We all need to be doing them together. So I'd love to hear from you with your ideas what is it God is calling you to suggest, to do, to begin, to be part of, to help us reconnect with God, reconnect with one another, and reconnect with the community in which God has planted us, so that we can not just see God's kingdom come in earth, 
but we see God's kingdom come here in the parish of All Hallows as it is in heaven. Amen.